electronically. Members of the public are invited to participate in this meeting of council by accessing the meeting, which will be live streamed on the Southwest Middlesex YouTube channel or by contacting the clerk to receive a registration link to join the meeting being held electronically. So I'll take this time to ask anyone for a disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. Does anyone have a pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we will move forward. Are there any additions to the agenda? Uh, yes, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, um, we had sent out an invitation earlier on um, for the Glencoe Alliance to speak to the group tonight and um, they are here. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, that, that was included. I'm not sure which part of the agenda you, you would like it to fall, so. Uh, can we put that under delegations and presentations? That's perfect. perfect. Thank you. And so to add to the agenda as well, under open discussion, Councillor Mark McGill requested that I bring to this committee's notice, his notice of motion that will be at happening at the next council meeting on Wednesday. So I'm going to add that to the agenda as well. Uh, do I have a mover and a seconder for that? Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris moves it and a seconder. Thank you, Kelly. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. So first up on our agenda, we have delegations and presentations. So I'm happy to hear from the Lions. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to make official, an official presentation. Okay. <clears throat> what would you like to know? Well, I, I think that just if I can jump in quickly, Mel, the thrust was just to hear from our partner groups in the in the municipality. And you guys were, were asked to, to uh, come tonight, basically, to just give us an update of what your club is up to. And, and hmm. uh, you know, part of what the rec committee does is they hear from our organizations to see if there's any ways that we can help moving forward in the future so i thought it was appropriate if you guys came and kind of educated us as what you're doing and and how you're making out in the community okay <clears throat> excuse me um we're slowly recovering from covid and uh <clears throat> excuse me still trying to uh get some new members as uh fast as we can having some progress there um, as far as projects, yes, we are looking to um, start uh, a major project, which we hope will help with uh, generating interest in uh, membership as part of the membership drive. We did have Greg and Ashley make a presentation to uh, the Lions Club some time ago, uh, basically summarizing the <clears throat> master plan for Parks and Rec and uh, mentioning a, a few projects that we may be interested in, okay? And that was presented to the club and certainly there is an interest. There's definitely an interest in uh, uh, partnering with uh, a project. Any questions? Could you tell, I, I'd like to hear uh, what some of those projects were recommended. I, I know I've read the master plan, but there's a few in our group uh, that may have not had the opportunity to. So it'd be great to hear what projects the Lions are keeping in mind. <clears throat> well, uh, don't, well, basically some of the things that we're tossing around was uh, <clears throat> one of the things that the Lions was considering is trying to spread out to the other communities such as App Appen and Wardsville. So we're looking at app and um, the new playground, maybe partnering up with some of that work there, the work that's going on in Wardsville. Okay. Uh, certainly within Glencoe, one of the projects that one of the uh, <clears throat> Alliance was quite interested in was the uh, path, the walking paths throughout uh, over the project 2000 and extended as a, a version of it as well too. So those were the sort of things that were talked about. Again, nothing firm, uh, just at this stage at the interest level. Thank you. Does anyone else on the committee have a question for Mr. Monez? Go ahead, Eleanor. Yeah, I just wonder, uh, is the Lioness Club still in operation? 
as well as the Lions? No, it is not. It, okay. it was disbanded. Uh, they disbanded themselves, oh, at least a year ago, maybe two okay. now. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Denise. I'm wondering if Mel might, uh, or the Lions Club might be interested in doing a volunteer drive, a specific uh, event in Wardsville. A volunteer drive? Yeah. Come out and speak. Speak oh. to the people of Wardsville and what, you know, what good projects that the Lions Club has done. Absolutely. Absolutely. We already have... Uh, a handful of members from the Wardsville area. So okay. we're trying to reach out to all communities, especially for uh, new members. Anybody interested at this meeting, let me know, please. Okay, okay so you, you think that the Lions Club would actually do an in-person um, meeting at the Masonic Lodge? Are you talking about the whole club? No, just some members to come oh, out to the new residents. We have yeah. a lot of new residents. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, if you're interested in organizing something like that, just, just let me know. Uh, I am also chair of the membership committee. So I would okay. love to, exactly. I would love to okay. go and meet anybody. Uh, I'll get back to you. We'll look for September. Excellent. That'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mel. You're welcome. Great, do we see any other questions? All right, then moving forward, thank you so much, Mr. Monas, for coming and speaking on behalf of the Lions. Sure. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. We only have three items. So is there anything we'll go first? We have the January 31st committee meetings, no questions or comments. The April 25th committee meetings, any questions or comments? And then last, we have the terms of reference for the recreational committee. For that one, it looks like these are our terms of reference that we currently have. The hope is that uh, this committee may look a little different after the in the new term. Uh, it'll take some feedback from the existing members to see if this is the format that worked or if they'd like to see changes or anything different, how we can do a better job or a good job getting out into the community. Perhaps it'll look at our rec committee going to the Lions and going to the hockey, minor hockey, and going to skating themselves instead of having them come to us. Um, but that's a discussion that we will eventually have when we look at our maybe making changes of terms of reference. So with that, we need to pass a motion to uh, receive everything that's in the consent agenda. Do I have a mover? I'll move. So move. All right, so Alan Mayhew moved it and uh, Chris Emery seconded it. All in favor? Motion carried. Moving forward, now we have a staff report and update from the Director of Operations. Please go ahead, Mr. Storms. All right, thank you. And through you, uh, Councillor Cowell, Chair Cowell. Um, I won't spend too much time on this. The uh, arena renovations are ongoing, they're moving forward. Our, Substantial completion date uh, is still the, the first week in December. Um, if that all happens, which it should, then we would be looking at opening the new building um, in the first week in January. So um, on the construction end, I continue to work with the consultant and the engineers on a more than two or three days a week basis here to, to move the project and keep the project moving forward. Um, it's not like everything is perfect. We do have some challenges, some related to supply chain, et cetera, but we do have different options in place to accommodate, uh, you know, whether we get an HVAC unit or a dehumidifier um, on our normal timelines for that particular project. So we keep an eye on the, the construction. Um, the second part of my comments today would be that uh, the facilities and rec team is planning a, um, a grand opening, if you want to call it that, uh, to introduce the new facility to the community. Um, 
that there we, we hope to uh, engage all our particular um, users of the facility, including uh, our major users. Um, and we plan to have a whole slew of activities for the first couple of weeks when the new building is open. So we're looking at uh, a number of different uh, options out there um, to provide lots of uh, some free activities associated with public skating and stick and puck, that type of stuff. Um, as well as uh, we we're also looking into seeing whether we can get some um, um, some hockey games, the senior hockey game, maybe there on uh, one of the nights um, to engage the community to get them into the building. So we will be contacting and have tried uh, contacting our users uh, moving forward here to, to, to get the plan and, and to try to engage everybody in the community um, once the building is completed in the first part of January, because it is a showpiece and will be a showpiece moving forward. And uh, I think it would be great for people to have the opportunity to come and enjoy the, the building uh, once it's open. So um, though it's really kind of my comments for tonight and uh, or today, and we'll, we'll continue to work in that direction. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Mr. Storms? Yes, go ahead, Mayor Mayhew. Thank you, uh, Chairman Cull, Chairwoman Cull. Uh, Greg, thanks very much for the report. Greg, uh, there's some uh, real shortages of concrete uh, out there that I hear uh, from various uh, developers and uh, those in the industry. Uh, have you anticipated any uh, shortage of concrete at all? And through Chair Cowell to the mayor, um, we, not in this particular project, but certainly um, in some of the other capital areas that we're working in, yes. So, you know, we are watching that closely. Um, we haven't had any indication uh, on this particular project, um, but okay. certainly have on other projects, uh, Mayor Allen. So. Okay, no, yeah, it seems to be a, a real uh, problem out to, with some in the communities, but uh, that's good to know. That's great. Any other questions and comments? I have a couple. Um, so for the hockey and for the grand opening, have you thought of doing an all-star game or like a police versus fire or minor hockey versus someone fun? I know that with minor hockey, they've committed most of their ice or all of their ice to Bothwell. So they have a bit of a tighter schedule, but if we could bring them in and bring them back for like a not a pickup game, but you know, someone fun, the, their parents, or um, just you know, whether it's brainstorming or having them come to the table and give us an idea of you know, if they could have a dream team game, what would that look like? Who could we try and bring in that would just be for fun um, with the police versus fire? It might be something where it's not just the OPP. Maybe we have a couple Strathroy Caradox. Maybe we have a couple of old timers from the you know. I know my dad plays, he does not play hockey, but he's a former RSMP officer. So they often would come out and do games like that. So it was looking at how we can maybe bring the community into the center to see a couple of these games, whether they're a fundraiser or whether they're just something fun uh, to showcase this new building. And then even for figure skating, oftentimes they'll do like a sweetheart showcase or a sweetheart competition. And it's not something very competitive, but it's more an opportunity to give some of the other local skating clubs uh, the option. I know there are a lot of work, so the skating committee would have to have lots of notice for that, but uh, it might be a fun way in the first month to showcase our new facility to, you know, the Mount Bridges Club, the Bothell Club, the Elvingston Club, and just have a little bit of fun with the young ones showing off their um, their routines. And then maybe Eleanor could come in and show us what she has in her back pocket too. Um, those are just some of the ideas I was thinking about when uh, when we talked about our, our new week. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? Um, Mr. Sean, would you think that the minor hockey would be interested in something that? Obviously I've just put you on the spot, so <laughs> feel free to come back with something if you think you, you have an idea or they might be interested in something. I think you're muted. Hello? There you go. Perfect. Okay. Um, 
what I can what I can say right now for minor hockey is that we have um, I think it's January 21, 22 weekend booked. Uh, and hopefully that's still the case that we are going to have a, a Dave Waller Memorial Tournament, which is um, just a fun jamboree for uh, like five, six, seven year olds. Um, I know we, we didn't have it last two years. So uh, the one that we my team entered in last year was was packed. Uh, you know, all the teams want to want to do something like that. So as long as we can kind of get a maybe a little closer to that date, uh, 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 100% uh, guarantee that, you know, we'll be able to host it because we'll have to get teams booked in September kind of thing. And, um, you know, anything outside our powers that would cause that not to happen, I mean, that, that happens. But, you know, if we can do that, then we'd have, we'd have two days of, of kids and families from Mount Bridges, West Lorne, like you said, Alamos and Watford, um, Mount Bridges, there's probably, you know, teams from Illerton, Luke and that kind of thing that would all be coming in through the arena on that weekend. Um, as far as like alumni or uh, uh, other teams, I know there's a couple individuals in the community that look after, you know, organizing men's leagues and stuff like that. They would probably be the best ones to, you know, bring back, you know, if, if Dan Watson is, you know, coming back to see his parents or, you know, Chad Kemp's in the area or something like that. Some of the players that have kind of gone on from Glencoe to different or bigger, brighter hockey careers, they, they would um, have a better contact to them than, than through minor hockey right now. Thank you so much for that feedback. I know none of those things. Um, and then to add to that, Chris, I know that you do plan uh, a bit of a, an adult league. Do you think there's anything that you can think of that might be a good way to sort of celebrate the grand opening? Not off the top of my head right now, um, Chair. Um, I do. That would be the best the best person to uh, ask about that, that would be Steve um, Morris. Uh, he's the one that looks after the pickup. I step in when he's when he's not available. It sounds like your internet is- Am I frozen? You're not frozen, but you are delayed. So Chris, I got what you said that you think Steve Morrison would be a good one to help connect with that. So maybe we'll tap Hillary to help with- I was gonna say that that's my person. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I love the idea of a figure skating showcase. That's awesome. Uh, and having just a weekend of fun games, even if, don't mind my children, um, <laughs> even all age groups, the adults, you know, whoever you can get into that rink in that first week is going to be huge. It needs to be everybody, you know, fun games, whether it's the fire department, you just got to get the people in there at this point because we've all patiently been waiting and we all want to be there. So fun skates. Like maybe, I don't think it'll be open for Christmas, but there's also Santa at that time who does Santa skates and that kind of stuff. Like how can you best bring people in to participate? Go ahead, Eleanor. Yeah, I just want to add, Sean mentioned alumni and I think that's really important because there's a lot of older people in town who were quite involved in the area you know, the county that we're involved with skating in some way or another. So I think reaching out to that group some way to have people come in. Um, a lot of them are still in touch and a lot of people don't skate so much anymore, but would probably love to come and do some sort of a, an activity. So I think it would be interesting to reach out to alumni. And there's a lot of historical records I know with, with the skating club. Um, there's a lot of information there that we could probably access to find names and so on. So I'm hearing a lot of amazing suggestions and I totally expect staff to be like, we don't know any of these people. So 
staff, could you give us some advice or suggestions on how we as a rec committee can help with this? Yeah, I can I can jump in there. I, I guess there's a good, for me, it could be a, a subgroup of this particular group that would really be responsible for planning the events um, after January one. Um, it could be this particular group on a more frequent basis doing that. Certainly, we have the resources available to us staff wise, certainly Ashley's involvement and Melissa's involvement. Um, so we can do a lot of the sort of admin work. It really then becomes a community planned event. And, you know, whatever this particular group would see fit, um, you know, we will just help that group out. And, but I do agree so much with Eleanor that it's extremely important to uh, get people into this building, um, you know, after it's completed, because uh, it, it will be a showcase for the municipality. So, and uh, it will make people relax a little bit uh, about using the facility in the future as well. So it's this particular committee's choice where they would like to head uh, Chair Cal. Well, I know when speaking with uh, Kelly Mona, she had said that one of the things she really wanted to see out of this committee was that we were doing things in the community in an effort to drum up support for recreation. Please correct me if I have misquoted you in some way, but I genuinely feel that that's what we all wanted to see out of this rec committee. Um, I'll stop talking. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Sean. Okay, um, when do you think, Craig, that you would have like a for sure green light from your contractors that things will get going because, you know, to schedule this and plan this kind of stuff and then, you know, not be able to happen. Um, do you think, do you, do you feel fairly confident with that first week of January? Uh, yeah, and through you, Chair Cowell, to Sean, yes, uh, at this particular point, because they've given us that uh, that substantial completion date, um, which would include, you know, the majority of the major functions of the building. Um, still don't think it's a bad idea to, you know, if this group met more or there was a subcommittee of this group that uh, job was to get together to plan this event, then, you know, that, I don't see that as a problem moving forward because, you um, you know, if something came up, we may be into, you know, different options, that type of stuff. But, you know, the eventuality is to get this building open. And if we, we, if we even had to extend the operating season this year, we're like, we're willing to look at that as well. So, um, you know, I, I, that's in the contract. I, I expect the, the building to be, you know, based on that particular time frame right now. Um, I don't, and I haven't, I have no indication that that would change, um, you know, and they're, they're pretty much halfway through the project, so. And I think what we've heard is that um, December 8th is when the project is supposed to be completed. And then it still gives us many weeks to have some cushion time, some, you know, figuring things out, putting ice in, because just because the project is completed doesn't mean we have ice in. So, and then holidays and vacation. And, you know, I feel like our staff uh, does, has, has had to get a lot done, so. Um, hopefully that'll mean that January 1st, we're not having a Santa skate, we're having a New Year's skate and maybe we can have a ball drop. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, right. sorry, Mr. Monez, you had your hand up. I was just, you said substantial completion date. It, is the game or is the aim to have everything completed or is there still going to be some work? The arena is completed and the ice is there and people can skate on it but there's still some other work going on. You know, usually substantial completion is, you know, probably about 95% of the work that was required in the contract. So um, I could see in this particular case, because of that particular date, if we had trouble getting, uh, you know, the, the new dehumidification system that, uh, um, you know, needs to be in place for the summer, there may be some smaller things like that, that, that occurred after, but, um, no, when I when they give me that date, I expect the building to be pretty much pretty much complete. Showcase ready. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, I think that we have some really great ideas. I just had one with the New Year's ball drop for kids. They used to do that at uh, the Children's Museum where at noon on New Year's Eve, they do a ball drop, but we could always do one at noon at the arena for the kids and have, anyways. 
So with all of these um, ideas, I would go to it. I sorry to interrupt. I would go to an adult ball dropping on ice for New Year's. Just saying, that sounds so much fun. <laughs> right? um, sorry, uh, Mayor Mayhew. You did you raise your hand? Thank you. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting with the president of uh, the New Horizon Group this week. Uh, he requested a meeting. I shared the meeting uh, results with Jill. Uh, we've been chatting about it. Uh, they. Uh, they too want to be part of our recreational uh, uh, footprint in this new building. And they are looking forward to uh, returning to the arena. Uh, they were very complimentary uh, with uh, some of the uh, changes they've seen in recreation in terms of uh, Ashley's work uh, in promoting various events. And uh, there is a little bit of a digital divide with that organization. They are not really digitally connected. And the request that came in was, quite frankly, uh, can uh, the municipality help us in a digital format, uh, procure uh, a little bit of marketing uh, for the new Horizon Group? And uh, they're looking at the shuffleboard that will be part of the new facility upstairs. So in terms of that uh, grand opening, uh, I don't want us to lose sight of uh, the new Horizon entity. Uh, in that uh, group as well. Uh, they, they are part of uh, that, that facility and uh, have a very long history in that building. And uh, they are looking forward to coming back. Uh, as many of you know, they are currently at the Quest Center. Uh, the facilities uh, there have been offered to them in, uh, during, the, during the duration of the uh, renovation. But they're looking forward to coming back and uh, they hope that uh, they can have some uh, support from the municipality in terms of uh, uh, social media, our website, uh, getting information out. They need to acquire new members uh, to uh, keep sustainability and also uh, to uh, come up with leadership as well. So uh, they're hoping to, uh, to foster some of that uh, as we uh, enter into the use of this new facility and when they return back. And uh, just, uh, we want to make sure that they're part of the picture as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so to carry on with what we were saying, and I think we can incorporate what Mayor Mayhew had said is I really think it would be beneficial for uh, us to have a subcommittee or a side group. And we call ourselves the grand opening of the arena. And it, within that we can plan multiple different events. And we reach out if we, if, if Kelly and Sean are not the representatives or don't want to be the representatives for the skating club or in, and the minor hockey, then we make sure someone from skating club and minor hockey is there. If you want to be awesome, I don't want to voluntold you into this. You've already done a lot, but we'd love to see you involved in this. And, and we can talk about a month worth of grand opening events and we can bring New Horizon in and maybe they can run a shuffleboard session and it can be something we do during the week and we can have a list of events that are happening as a part of a grand opening extravaganza. Um, and it can be something that we meet in person in the council chambers so that if there are folks who can't make it, uh, they can zoom in through our digital hybrid process. And for folks who are not so comfortable with the electronic component, they can meet in person with us. But having these opportunities to brainstorm ideas and, and then saying, okay, this is what I will do. I will sign up to reach out to some of the alumni associated with hockey or reach out to the fire department and see if we can get some firefighters involved. And I liked your idea, Hillary, of having a Saturday that's wall to wall event, Saturday, Sunday, you know, we have, okay, first up is a hockey, next up is a skating showcase. So I, I would love to see a mini volunteer committee as for the grand opening. Staff, how would you like us to do that? This would be a volunteer. So we would be committing our, our spare time to this. What would you like to see from us in some type of official capacity? Uh, I, motion? I, yeah, I think if, you know, you, you, I guess you'll have to determine that as a group, like how many people you would like on that particular committee. Um, Secondly, the staff resources will be available to that committee as they are to this committee um, to try to help out as much as we can in the promotion and, you know, even uh, some of the admin work associated with it. So, um, you know, you would see the same staff people at your at the committee meeting. 
um, that can be the th those particular meetings can be the frequency can be uh, arranged through uh, Melissa and Ashley and myself. We can get that stuff out and then we just start the process. So I guess it's up to the group here to determine, you know, what and who they would like to see on that particular group. Well, I think everyone here is welcome. Is there anyone in the group you think that is missing that's a part of this community that we need to send out an invitation or request? I think we need to definitely consider the New Horizon group to get them involved. Uh, is there anyone Chris, else? Um, Chris is frozen up there momentarily, so. Mm -hmm. Am I frozen? Or is it Alan that's frozen? It's Alan that's frozen. Yeah, he is. I can hear you, Chris. I think he's frozen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so moving forward then, uh, I think that we have a great group here. Is there any other suggestions? And feel free to shoot an email. This is not set in concrete. If there's something or someone else that you think needs to be at this table, um, go ahead, Mr. Moniz. Um, and just a suggestion that uh, in the past, I know the high school has always had a student versus uh, police hockey game. Okay. And maybe that would be a good venue to resurrect that and get the students involved. Oh, and it would be a fun thing for them to have, exactly. like first week back of school kind of thing. Yeah. Hopefully, we agree. Second. Gosh, we're having some technical difficulties here, some of us, eh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Well, folks, I guess we need a motion to start a committee for the grand opening of the arena. Uh, go ahead, Chris, you have a question, comment? I'll make that motion. Thank you. So the motion will be that through the rec committee, we will make a subcommittee of volunteers for mm -hmm. the grand opening of the arena. And Please correct me. Is Mr. Mona's part of our committee or is he just here for the delegation? <laughs> okay. He's just, he's just we... here for the delegation. So, and I just saw Jill is here now too. So, um, could we include someone from Lions and then Mr. Mona's could volunteer himself if he wants to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Cool. Done. <laughs> <laughs> if you're here, you're on the committee. <laughs> All right. And do we have a seconder for that motion? Thank you so much, Sean. All right. All in favor. Well, that was unexpected and delightful. Love these kind of mini. Okay. So moving forward, if we don't have any questions or comments, I'd like us to stay on track. This is one of our longest meetings yet. I'm so thrilled. Um, we have an update from the recreation and facilities supervisor. Please take the floor. Alex, you're muted. Yeah, he's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> IT is definitely not my specialty. <laughs> uh, you know what? My, I don't, I can't speak at, as much to the arena, but I have been in a few site meetings and I know it is moving forward and I'm very excited as well just for to to be a part of the finished product so I think a lot of uh, a lot of the ideas you had there for certain games and just getting people in the building would be uh, would be great exposure uh, just because I think they're going to have something that maybe they haven't seen before so I think that's uh, yeah just those ideas were, were fantastic for sure on my end I I've just been <laughs> trying my best just to do what I, what I, I think I was brought in here to do. So um, an update from me, I don't have too, too much to update other than I, I feel like uh, if anything, uh, very fortunate to be in this position and be working with all of you. Um, some of the updates I can give you, I guess, is uh, we've just been working hard in the field basically to get the town looking better. We've been working hard at getting gardens restored. Uh, I know I've been working with uh, the Horticultural Society as well uh, to get uh, just get some help with uh, some of the gardens and restoration and other things we've done so far. Um, uh, yeah, and as far as uh, everything else goes, we I think if anything, things are looking a lot better and just moving smoothly. And and if anything, 
I've just been happy uh, to be a part of it so far. Um, yeah, I don't have too, too much else, uh, but I'm open to questions or anything else of the nature. Thank you for that update. Is there any up, uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Alex Weber? Weber, Weber? Please correct me. Yeah, it's Weber. <laughs> Weber, okay, thank yeah. you. Go ahead, Denise, and then we'll do Mayor Mayhew. I want to give Alex a big thank you for cleaning up Little Kin Park, Haggerty Road, Flower Bed, and the Cenotaph. And we are going to launch our clean up, uh, team up to clean up here this week so that we can keep abreast of all that hard work that went into the restoration. So I thank you, Alex, for getting that done. Yeah, I appreciate that, Denise. I know you and I were chatting and, and uh, I welcome any help that you can lend. And, and yeah, it's just been a major part of, I guess, the last month and a half of me being here is just uh, a lot of beautification on the outside of things. Um, and I think uh, those little towns have gotten a little bit more attention and I just, I want to keep them looking that way. So I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the feedback and I appreciate the, uh, the, the nice kind words and I'll do whatever I can to, to help you out as well to keep it looking that way. So, so yeah, I appreciate that Denise for sure. And thank you for working with me too. Thank you for that. Go ahead, Mr. May uh, Mayor Mayhew. Uh, thank you, uh, Krista. Uh, yeah, Alex, I was amused by the uh, Hort Society uh, marking that uh, uh, Weeding Wednesdays right through August. Uh, they uh, have it on Facebook. They're getting a great response. People are uh, stepping forward, putting their names down for Wednesday evening. Each, each they target a different uh, uh, planning area. Uh, and uh, it's nice to see that because it's uh, it's not just a one shot deal. It's uh, they have a program that will continue on through the month. And uh, I understand that when that is over, they'll be looking at other things to do through the fall areas to prepare the beds for uh, a better spring uh, showing as well. So uh, that's great. I'm glad to see that harmony between the municipality and the horticultural society. It's uh, it's very beneficial to both parties. Uh, we need them, but they also need us, Alex. And uh, it's great to see that harmony. Just wanted to compliment you on that. Well, thanks. Thanks, uh, Alan, I appreciate that. And I got even more of a pecking list <laughs> once uh, <laughs> this one's done. And, and uh, I actually went around and there's a whole other, um, whole other phase of gardens and, and et cetera that I wanna try and get done before fall. So it's just been a major part of my focus uh, recently, and I really appreciate all the feedback and the positive thoughts. And we're all here as a community and we're all brought in for certain talents. And I think if anything, I'm using my talents for what they're worth and just trying to inspire others. And the fact we have the Hort Society on and um, Denise uh, down in Wardsville, and I've talked to a lot of people in Appen, like we've, I've had my hand in all these little areas just to try and inspire people. And, uh, and help keep this area beautiful. So I, I don't think it's a, a hugely difficult thing to do. So I appreciate that, Alan. And yeah, we hopefully we can make those Wednesdays count. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Go ahead, Mr. Moniz. A further pat on the back uh, to Alex for the work that he did or had done around the uh, train station in prep for the Tartan Days uh, facilities. That was great work. Now, the other question is, the deck replacement on the train station is there been a, has there been a firm start update for that uh i yeah i'd let greg speak to that yeah that is for the first day after labor day so and then we had to kind of sundays uh, at the station i think was what we were making sure we accommodated yeah, yeah. so we we're um thank we, you we couldn't jump in there and get this done and kind of ruin the summer there. So we are monitoring the deck and just checking it to make sure things are good with it. But contractor will be uh, tearing apart starting first day after Labor Day. Thank you. If we have no other questions for Mr. Weber, Weber, Weber. Weber. Yeah, it's Weber. <laughs> Sorry, I will get it right eventually. That's all right. Keep correcting me. No, no, yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, then we are going to move forward with the rec recreation coordinator. Thanks, Krista. Um, since we have a new committee, I thought it might just be helpful to maybe talk a little bit about what we're currently doing just in terms of recreation in the community. Um, so there's currently tennis, yoga, children's programming, circuit training, and aerobics programs that are running along with our pool programs. 
Um, the yoga and children's programs have been like one of our longest running recreation programs and they are still quite popular um, throughout the summer, which has been great. Uh, we've been adding some more aerobics programming in Glencoe with a local instructor um, who's super awesome and her programs are super fun. Um, so that's been great to add more of those. Um, we have a 2022 aquatics guide that is available on our website as well. And I've continued to update and add more information about recreational opportunities in Southwest Middlesex just on our website. Uh, in addition, I've been working on a spring summer recreation facilities guide as well as a fall winter rec and facilities guide. So those are almost, almost completed. So I can share the draft with you guys shortly. Um, so far for summer 2022 programs, we have had 430 online enrollments through Booking. So I can see, I can run a report and see how many people have enrolled in our programs. Um, so the total I checked today was 430. Um, probably approximately 300 of those are through the pool, which is really great to see. Um, in terms of aquatics, there's lots going on there. Um, so we had our swim to survive at the beginning of the summer. Um, which we haven't been able to run since COVID. So that was really great to have that program back as we had four schools and over a hundred students that participated. Um, we also had our Glencoe swim meet that was over Tartan Day weekend. So we had a um, hundred swimmers participate and a bunch of different Miss Patties. So we had Strathroy, Dutton, Essex, Tilbury, Harrow and Wyoming. They all came to the swim meet, which was good. Um, again, we haven't been able to run that since COVID, so everyone was really excited that uh, we were offering that again, and um, you know, the kids were really excited, and a lot of parents showed up. We had tons of people at the pool that day, um, and the weather was great, so that helped. Um, we plan on running that slow meet again in 2023, since it was so successful. Um, this summer, we've also increased aquatic programming, aquafit classes, because they're super popular, um, we always have a really good crowd to Aquafit. Eleanor is one of them that comes out to that. Um, we also are going to offer a bronze program um, this summer as well, which is a really great way to get future lifeguards so we can continue to have um, lifeguards at the Glencoe Pool. Um, we successfully transitioned as well to the Life Saving Society from the Red Cross. So the Red Cross had um, said that they were no longer doing their swim program, so we had switched. Um, and that's been going really well. Um, we also decreased the price of the swim preschool classes. Um, so when we redid our services and fees bylaw, um, we reduced the price of that to encourage people to participate um, in aquatic programs. And we've seen quite an increase in preschool registrants. So we've had most of those classes are full, um, which is really great to see as well. And we're almost done session two of swim lessons. Um, in terms of future programming, we have multiple new instructors that are going to be starting shortly. So we have a new children's baking and cooking program that's going to start this week that we've had a lot of uh, good feedback on already and everyone's really excited and I've already signed up to be on the list to get told when that's happening. Um, we also are adding some more children's daytime programming as requested. So we have a new children's instructor that is starting um, and then she has daytime availability, which is really great. So we'll be adding those. Um, pickleball lines at the tennis courts have also been painted and we're starting our new pickleball program this week so there's going to be a clinic that's run by a professional pickleball player on this Thursday um, in the evening and then after that we're going to start um, an evening program which is two times a week um, this is super requested in the community and uh, we're really excited to bring this to the community I'm almost done <laughs> Um, another project I'm working on is the Story Walk Trails. So that's at the Middlesex Library, um, which would be located at our Arboreta. So the plan is to have stories change on a fairly regular basis with different important topics such as marginalization, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So the library is also looking to add stories from the community um, through the Community Navigator, and we'll be posting about that in the future. So if you see posts about that, be sure to uh, share that because that'll be really great for that Story Walk Trail. And that's everything I have on my list. That was a lot of information. Thank you so <laughs> yeah. much for that, Ashley. Um, does anybody have any questions they have for Ashley or comments? I'm going to let Kelly go first, then Denise, and then Eleanor. I just have a quick question about the children's programming. Just wondering when that is anticipated to be out. Um, I know families are quickly filling up their schedules for the summer or have filled out their their schedules so just wondering when when to look for that 
um, the daytime program or the cooking, baking one or both? Either, both. Yeah, I just have a phone call actually from the cooking and baking children's programmer like while we were in this meeting. So I'm going to call her afterwards. So that should be announced. I mean, later today, I'll create a Canva and stuff for that. And we'll get that out tomorrow. Um, and then the new children's instructor just wanted kind of a week um, to kind of get settled and um, see how things go. And then we'll be adding those um, probably next week would be when those will be released. Alrighty, then we had Denise. I am asking about um, uh, some type of children programming on PD days uh, in all of the communities. Uh, that's one. And the next thing, uh, will you be having any increase in programming for adults? Uh, um, uh, photography, cards, uh, teaching people how to ice cakes, like anything like that for adults? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it always depends on um, getting instructors to teach those programs. Um, we've definitely increased like yoga and aerobics, and those are both adult programs as well as programs at the pool for adults. Um, but yeah, we could definitely talk. I know we talked a bit about um, a photography program, Denise, and you had some instructors that were um, possibilities for that. So we could definitely look into doing that. Um, yeah, I've had one um, instructor as well that was interested in doing like painting um, and uh, cup, cupcake decorating for adults. So um, that's another one we could add as well. Something to consider with um, what Denise had asked. I know that the New Horizon has done cards in the past. So it might be that instead of duplicating it, we might just say, okay, New Horizon, how can we support getting what you do out there and attracting people? And maybe the New Horizon could have a group day in Appen, a group day in Wardsville, a group day in Glencoe, and it might be a way for them to attract more members. And it's something where Ashley can just shout out about it rather than have to plan it or organize it. It might be a great way for the new horizon to get new members. Thank you, Krista, for bringing that forward. You bet. Um, all right, D Eleanor, go ahead. Thank you. Sure, you just mentioned the, the new horizon club getting members. I think it'd be cool if they had an outdoor shuffleboard program in the summer. That'd be awesome. I'd go to that. I'd join their group. <laughs> be fun um i want to say thank you ashley for the clock for the pool that was amazing <laughs> so we look forward to whenever we're doing laps or something we look up thinking i have to go to work what time is it we never know so um it was very kind to have that so quickly so i really appreciate that and i just want to i've been at the pool a lot and i noticed that the japanese beetles are really there a lot too and there's a lot of them. And I don't know if that bag at the end of the fence is in the right place because there are all the bugs are in the corner of that pool at that end, it seems. So I don't know. I know that's probably not your area looking at that piece, but it just seems they congregate. There's a lot of them down there. The bag was full today, so we changed okay. it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's doing its job. That's good. But I, I know what you're saying. So I'll, yeah. I'll take a look at that tomorrow too. They're going for a swim along the way. I always clean them out before I go in, but I mean, just, yeah. They, yeah they're I doing a great realize. job down there too. There's a great group of staff down there. So they're doing an awesome job. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Does anyone else have any questions for Ashley? All right, seeing none, we will move forward to an update from the facilities coordinator. Hi, everyone. Um, so facility bookings are going well. Um, ball and soccer seasons are underway and everyone settled in nicely and we're looking to the 2023 20, ice season. Um, so we're getting input from our ice users for that. Um, as many of you know, we use the facility booking software booking. Um, we also use that for like our programming. And we are seeing more use of people booking online. You can also check the, the availability of the facilities and such too. So it's a great resource. We're certainly encouraging more and more use of that. And as well as the online paying option is really convenient for those who are coming out of town or just can't make it in during work hours for uh, payments. Uh, at a recent staff meeting, we discussed 
um, an R zone policy and like looking at that. Um, basically what that is, it's just like an operating policy that identifies the code of conduct, which would apply to all of our facilities and buildings and programs and parks. And it would enforce a set of expectations around inappropriate behavior, violence and vandalism of participants and the general public. I think it ties in nicely with our new facility that's going in in Glencoe with the arena and such. So it's definitely something that um, we're looking at and that's from the town of Oakville and a, a lot of neighboring municipalities have that program set in place. That's kind of all I've got there. That is really interesting update. I know we've seen some of these before um, and I, I know like our, our children all have to sign a code of conduct when they agree to go on ice, or at least my children have. Um, so I think if we have a community-wide one, it's not so surprising to be like, hey, you can't vandalize stuff while you're using it. Seems reasonable. Perfect, does anyone have any questions or comments uh, for Melissa? All right, seeing none, do we need a motion to receive these verbal updates? No, good, moving forward. Uh, so we have an open discussion round table and I kind of wish we'd bumped this up to the beginning because there's lots of new faces and not everybody knows each other. So I'm gonna take a minute. I'd ask all of you to take no more than two minutes introducing yourselves, telling us a little bit about it. We did this in all of the interviews. So I know so much about you, but you don't know anything about each other. And I think if we're gonna work together, it would be really lovely to know each other's skills and interests and um, who each person is. And that includes staff because we have some new faces around the staff table. So I will go first. I will try and be short and brief. My name is Krista Cowell. I have three children. One skates, one is in one of those bronze swimming programs because someday she wants to be a lifeguard. So she's doing that later on in the summer. Uh, two little boys who haven't figured out exactly what they wanna be when they grow up but hockey player might be included in that. Um, and then my husband who he curls a little bit, so rec wise. Uh, that's a little bit about me. We've been in the community for a long time and I took swimming lessons here when I was a kid and I don't know how to skate and that's kind of embarrassing as an adult. <laughs> so going forward, I will go around my image clockwise. So Chris Emery is next to me. Please introduce yourself, Chris if your internet is able. Well, um, I'm Chris Emery. I've been living here all my life. I'm an avid ice user for the arena, a hockey player. Uh, and I just enjoy uh, doing lots of stuff in the community. Thank you so much for that, Chris. All right, moving forward, we'll have Ashley introduce herself. Sorry, do you wanna let me unmute myself there? Um, I'm Ashley, so I'm the recreation coordinator. Um, I've been here for over a year now um, and I've, I've loved it. Uh, it's been great building um, relationships with all of you and all the community organizations and creating more recreational opportunities for the community and yeah I don't know what else <laughs> you'd like me to to say. She also has horses. I do have a horse named Z. <laughs> all right go ahead Melissa. I'm Melissa Tai, and I am the Building Bylaw and Facilities Coordinator for the Municipality of Southwest Middlesex. I'm new to this role, began in February of this year, um, but I've worked for the municipality since 2019. Are you involved in any rec stuff? Uh, my son is in swimming lessons. I don't really have much time for anything else. <laughs> He's too busy. Did he, did he like them? Uh, he's crying less and less now. <laughs> it's getting better. That's the mark of a successful swimming year. Yes. Um, go ahead, Jill. Sorry, you said Jill, not Jeff. I don't know what Jeff is here. So. 
Um, I'm Jill, Bell Chamber Glazier, and I'm uh, the CAO clerk and get to work with the fine team uh, that's here today to help out. Um, and just petting my new blind kitty cat. She's my rescue kitty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm really excited about the team that's pulled together. I know there's been lots of changes that have happened in recreation, and um, I, I think we're, we're starting to row in the same direction and has been a very tough couple of years with COVID, but I, I think the, the team, including starting with Greg, um, but all, also with um, Alex uh, Weber, <laughs> um, he's really helped out, but Alex Yardy was a tremendous help as well. Um, when we transitioned, Ashley has been amazing and Melissa is really nicely filling in the role that she's taken on as well. So I, I think we've got uh, all the players in the seats from a staff perspective that can really help to move things forward. Thanks. Thanks, I'm going to go on to Denise. Denise Corneille from Wartsville. I'm a re retired RN. I enjoy gardening, cooking, and I love fishing. I am so very enthused with the Southwest Middlesex Master Plan. I see a lot of great changes and great programming coming to Southwest Middlesex. And I'm very happy for uh, Ashley Parker for coming into our lives here and creating all kinds of really fun programs for everybody. And as well with Southwest Middlesex encouraging all of this programming, it's, it's wonderful. And I'm really hoping that we can encourage um, all the new residents in Southwest Middlesex to get involved. Excellent, thank you so much. Kelly, go ahead. Uh, my name is Kelly Moniz. Um, I've lived in the community uh, the majority of my life. I live uh, right in Glencoe with my husband and we have three kids. Um, my husband is part of the Glencoe Minor Soccer Board, and I am on the figure skating board. Um, and my, we are kept very busy with our kids with soccer and figure skating and dance and hockey. Um, so recreation is definitely a huge part of our lives. Thank you so much, Kelly. Go ahead, Greg. Ooh, you want me to speak now? Two minutes, <laughs> less than. I'm Greg Storms. I'm the director of operations for Southwest Middlesex. So my areas of responsibility are in public works, uh, looking after that particular department as well as facility and recreation. Um, my background is mostly all in recreation um, from school on until now. And um, I think it was probably about 10 years ago that somebody asked me if I would help out with the public works department. And since I did that, I kind of assumed the both roles wherever I've went. So um, that's kind of just a little bit about me. Um, we'll say that I really do appreciate the group that's uh, around the table tonight. Uh, for me, this is an important part of, of what uh, was mentioned in the facilities and rec master plan and what staff are committed to, which is to try to engage the community to make uh, not just programming, but everything better uh, if we can uh, in Southwest Middlesex moving forward. So it does take a, a group like this. Uh, don't have to say too much about the staff because I think our staff certainly understand where, where I'm coming from and what I think of the job that they're doing. Um, I, we meet weekly. Our, our goal is always to try just like it was through Canada Day and Tartan Days to assist the community to make these events go off well. Um, you know, Ashley and Melissa do a wonderful job every day of communicating with our residents and Alex, uh, I, you know, all I've said to Alex is one of the best things you can do is make this community beautiful and he kind of took that to heart and, and I appreciate that as well. And, uh, you know, I've had the, the pleasure of working with Jill since I've uh, been here and, um, you know, this is a very good team and, and the people around the, the table tonight make it an even better team for me so. That's just kind of my general comments. Thank you so much. Next up, we have uh, Hillary. Hello, everybody. I'm here representing the small corner of Melbourne. 
I am a member of the Glencoe women's soccer team. I attend some of the recreation programming in Abin um, for fitness. And uh, my husband is a ball hockey uh, hockey person who he runs the Friday night adult men's league. Uh, and he's looking to for some local ball hockey as well. So we have two kids uh, that are two and one, hopefully future hockey players in the area or soccer or whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm part of the recreational committee to try and just bring and support programming for my kids and, and for myself and my husband. We're both very active family and we look forward to be able to do some of that closer to home. Awesome, thank you for that contribution. Alex Weber. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so I've, I'm a sporto guy. I've been involved with sports my whole life. Um, that being said, I grew up playing basketball, hockey, baseball. Um, I spent 20 years of my career out west, uh, which involved working for the Calgary Flames and working for the Kona Rockets. So I, I do like to uh, get my ice to a high level. Um, so in as well as being a certified ice technician through ORFA. Uh, <clears throat> I've been here for about a month and a half with uh, Southwest Middlesex and I can kind of just kind of uh, reiterate what Greg said. We have a, a great team with some great pieces in place and I felt very welcomed here and very encouraged to do uh, the things that I think I was brought in to do. Um, so that being said, I, I, I did have a garden restoration business at one point out West, uh, which helped people basically restore gardens uh, to a, back to a better uh, proper place. And um, that's what kind of gives me a lot of my history. I'm a baseball coach. Uh, I've been a ref, I've been a player. So everything uh, is what's led me to my job now is because I've been involved with sports for a very long time. So that's what keeps me doing what I do. Um, so yeah, I appreciate all the kind words tonight and hopefully uh, we can have much more of those moving forward as a group. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, Sean Van Bilsen. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so Sean Van Bilsen, um, lifelong resident of Southwest Middlesex. Um, I have two sons, 10 and almost seven, who are involved in hockey and soccer and swimming lessons and um, all those kind of things in the community. Uh, my goal for being on this community is to uh, basically ensure that the facilities like the physical facilities are uh, remained kind of the way they are or improved so that the next generation can use them because i've seen where they've come from um like maybe not the you know the building of the arena but um many years in the arena i've seen the project 2000 building or um fields go from uh, grass uh, to great soccer and baseball facilities. And uh, I know a lot of the community members put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into that, into building all that. And I just wanna make sure that they stay mm -hmm. as well as they are going forward. Sorry for my outburst. Thank you for that. My chair broke. We're in a ghetto cottage. It is what it is. <laughs> Next up, uh, thank you so much for that, Sean. Eleanor. Thanks, Krista. So my name is Eleanor. I've lived in Glencoe most of my life. I grew up here and participated in local sports when all there was to do was figure skate and swim. And so I started skating at the old arena, which was right where the ambulance is now. That was a really cool place. And I swam at the Glencoe pool because it was always there. And at that time, there were two diving boards so I'm really aging myself now, but it was my son who fell off the high board and that's why they removed it. So we have a little bit of that connection to, to the pool. Um, but I've always taken pride in living here and being part of the community. And um, now that I have grandkids there, I wanna do the same for them, have them be part of the community and be involved. And as an active senior in sports, I keep involved myself by, um, you know, doing the lane swimming, I go skating. Um, I am a, a figure skating coach certified, also as a lifeguard at the pool. 
um, second degree black belt. So I did have a martial arts school out in this way a few years ago. But right now I'm still working. So when I retire, I might start picking up some of those other things a little more. Um, Krista, I'll show you how to skate in the winter, <laughs> if you like. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I look forward to doing some things and being part of the, bringing to the community things that people want and need and, and just being able to collaborate and, and do some of those fun, exciting things that we've talked about through this meeting. So it's, it's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So if we're talking about things that exist because of me, your, you as a human, uh, if you've ever been to the aquatic center in London and you'll notice there are like fish along the glass, that's because of me. I ran high speed into the glass. And after that, the very next week or two, they put up reflective things. So you're welcome. Anyways, oh, and we got, I don't know, I think I missed uh, Mayor Mayhew. So please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Krista. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all new members uh, for your contribution as mayor. I, I love to see some new faces and uh, we uh, really appreciate you bringing your talents to the table. It's uh, very much uh, appreciated. And I will, would also like to thank staff. I'd be amiss not to thank them for guiding us through uh, uh, two very, very difficult years. My background is business, uh, 46 years on the street. Uh, I uh, started on the main street in 1972. Uh, I bought uh, the company in 1975, bought the real estate in 85, and I sold out in 2017. I uh, spearheaded the, uh, reno the uh, moving and the renovation of the Glencoe train station. I also chaired the uh, Cenotaph uh, building in Glencoe, uh, First World War, Second World War, and North Korea, South Korea conflict uh, as part of that uh, triage. And that's why I think I'm interested in Alex's uh, portfolio so much. Uh, I really enjoy uh, uh, the, the beautification aspects. I'm not an athlete, I'm a hunter and a fisherman, but athleticism in our family uh, is there. Uh, my son is 42 years old. He still plays competitive hawk uh, soccer on a weekly basis for Kitchener. And uh, I have a granddaughter that uh, plays uh, international uh, ringette. And I have a nephew who has played professional hockey in Europe. So uh, uh, hockey, soccer, ringette, ice skating sports uh, are part of our tabletop conversations. And again, thank you very much for all new members and the ones that we've had in the past. Thank you. Thank you for that, everyone. We've had a short, sweet conversation of our new rec committee and the staff involved with it. So now I will open up to round table. Uh, that was the name of this one. So I'd like to hear if there's anything anyone would like to bring up that wasn't already discussed in the agenda. If there's anything else anyone would like to talk about, this is our opportunity. Uh, thank you, go ahead, Denise. You're muted. I'd like to know if the com uh, committee has ever spoken about uh, volunteer recognition for the municipality. We have not as the committee, but I can tell you that I made a notice of motion at the meeting in June and we will be voting on it in the meeting in July to ask about how we can recognize the volunteers and staff in this community. Um, I know I've been involved in other recognitions elsewhere uh, where they would have like a barbecue or they would have a big event to recognize the different folks in the community and what they do. So we've, we're gonna, I'm planning on asking for a report to come back to see what other communities can do and how we can support them. Did you have any ideas about that, Denise? I don't think it's something we as a committee have talked about. So if there's anything the committee would like to add to it, this is a great opportunity to do that because it's something council will be talking about on Wednesday. I'll stop talking. I, I was just making an inquiry. No, we haven't. Can Go ahead, Eleanor. Say, yeah, I just, as you say that, like, I think that's a great idea. And I see a lot of the youth who are volunteering. I know my granddaughter is down at the pool volunteering, teaching swimming lessons because she's probably in the same class your daughter is. But is there some way to acknowledge that more than just giving them their community hours for school? You know, I think they would feel so proud if we if we did, you know, talk about them a little bit somehow or, or show them some sort of a recognition. I don't know what that would be, but. 
I'm writing that down. The other thing that we've talked about um, briefly, not so much at the committee level, but with committee members is the idea that maybe some of our council committees wouldn't be paid committees, but would be volunteers, and that we would add this as a component of recognition. And I'm not saying this to be all and end all, but that is something that we as a committee can discuss and consider. Uh, it'll definitely be something that will come up when we do the restructuring of our committees or uh, what's the word? We had it early on our agenda. Council, committee, go ahead, Jill. You know what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Terms of yeah. reference. And so some terms of reference look at these committees as volunteers, and it makes it a little easier sometimes to add ad hoc committees when you're trying to run a special event, especially if it's a short term sort of thing. Um, and so it's something to consider when we're looking at our terms of reference is if this committee graduates onto something that is not a paid position, but a volunteer one. And then that's when we would recognize the people who volunteer for Southwest Middlesex. And we would say, okay, our, our volunteer pool helpers, our committee members, um, that's how we would recognize them at the end of the year or once a year kind of thing. Um, and then, the other side of it was, I don't remember what I was going to say, but it how does a better job where we could have like volunteers in the community who do good work also mentioned or get shut out. Looks like we're going to lose a couple people. So uh, I hope you enjoy your vacation. I am also on vacation. I tried to find my fanciest vacation shirt. You might see it on Wednesday. Um, <laughs> anywho, is there any other comments about that or anything in general Absolutely. we can bring these things up yeah. oh we lost kelly no we didn't she just moved um is there any other comments or questions anyone would like to bring up it's our first meeting so if you've had ideas written down that you've been bursting with the scenes to tell us about and you haven't already please oh, feel have. free to... okay go ahead eleanor i know i talk a lot but i'm just thinking are we meeting again before the fair because that's a great opportunity for us to be out connecting with the public and gathering input and ideas at that venue somehow so if we're I, not going to meet before that it might be good to talk about it or have a like again another group maybe talk about what we could do to gather community input or just be out there you know in some capacity I know that we often have a meeting in September and October, and it's a precursor to the budget, um, but we haven't done that for the fair, but I was just messaging with Jill and she'd mentioned the idea of having another grand opening meeting and that maybe that grand opening meeting would be in uh, August and at that oh. point we might even use the fair as a platform to say, hey, we're planning some grand opening events. These are some of our ideas. Mm. Do you folks have anything you'd like to bring forward or like to see kind of thing? So, yeah. yeah. I'm putting down that as a note for myself, but I feel like we might have a minute taker. So maybe they wrote it down too. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? suggestions, ideas. All right. Then if there's nothing else, the last thing I'll bring up was Councillor Mark McGill is making a notice of motion and he asked for our input on it. So I will read it right now. Whereas Southwest Middlesex is undertaking a significant renovation at the Glencoe Memorial Arena with financial support through grants Jenny. from both the federal and provincial government which will fund a portion of the cost of the project. And whereas the signage will be replaced on the exterior of the building, and there is opportunity to consider renaming the facility to reflect the broader community and or expanded use of the renovated building. And whereas there is currently no fundraising campaign for the improvement for the community recreation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that council consider renaming the facility and consider raising consider fundraising to mitigate the building's financial impact on Southwest Middlesex taxpayers. So I think he'd like our opinion on whether or not we should rename it and yeah, taxpayers money, the fundraising part. Go, raise your hands, not all at once. 
we spend a lot of money on the logo for Southwest Middlesex. Why not have it up on the top of the arena logo. with community or, or, or calling it a community center, or if it's going to be more than just an arena, it could be expanded upon. But having that nice logo up there, I think would be really cool visually. Okay. That's a good comment. Anyone else? I think they might be thinking like Southwest, go ahead, Hillary. I was gonna say, it sounds like there's a lot more than just an arena happening in there. So it definitely needs a rebranding of some sort for their new building to encompass what it is, whether it's a community hub or a community center with an arena, but something that better encompasses everything that it's going to be. So recreational hub is a nice jazzy one. Yeah. Sean, you went off mute. I feel like you want to say something. Yeah, I, I uh, welcome the idea of maybe changing the name from arena to something that like I said, encompasses everything since it's going to be year round. Um, I, I hesitate to maybe change the um, name of it from Glencoe to Southwest Millsex, um, just because it would be confusing maybe to other people uh, that aren't from this area. Okay, where is Southwest Middlesex? You know, where is this? Is it where exactly is this building? But if it was still called Glencoe, whatever, then I think that would make it clearer for other people coming to the area. Okay, so thinking of like putting it on a map, you're like, hey, I know how to get to Glencoe. There's got to be an arena somewhere. You stop anywhere and they can tell you. But if you don't know how to get to Glencoe and you're just like, I, I totally feel that perspective. Comments on feedback on that? Yeah, I, sorry. I, <laughs> like even, even people know where Glencoe is, but people don't know where Southwest Middlesex is. So if you're from London or Sarnia or Chatham and you have to go to the Southwest Middlesex arena, you might not even know which way to turn out the laneway. But if you were to say to somebody, I got to go to Glencoe Arena, then at least you know where you got to go. I just, I think that it just would be confusing too many people if you got rid of the name, the name Glencoe on it. Um, Greg, do you know what the name of the arena in Kamoka and Kilworth is? Because I don't. I just know there's one there. Well, I think it's the Middlesex Center Wellness Center. So um, there, are, there are in both both sides of this of this picture. I mean, you have, you know, you have arenas named like North, Mid North Middlesex, right? I mean, they have arenas, North Middlesex Arena. Um, you do have in other cases that the arena, you know, even after amalgamations were directly related to the town that they were in. So I think Sean makes a point that, uh, that people would make a direct comparison, but there also is the fact that, you know, uh, the people in Southwest Middlesex uh, have paid for this renovation as well. And that includes Wardsville and Appen and Melbourne. So and if I miss somebody, hopefully I didn't miss anybody there, <laughs> including Clanko. Sorry. I'll let Alex go and then Kelly and then Manuel. I was just thinking, is there somebody significant that was involved in sports and Glencoe history? And I do remember when they renamed the uh, currently where the Blue Jays play, they had a contest for lack of a better term. Maybe that could be put out to the citizens to get some ideas for our name as well that maybe they would like. Just a um, thought. And I'll add to, and maybe this will be something that Mr. Moniz touches on, but the reason it was named Glencoe Memorial Music Arena is the Lions in a it, they created them. So there was a group of folks who were interested in creating an arena in Glencoe and they started Lions in Glencoe in an effort to create the arena and to get funding. And so when they talk about membership campaigns, a lot of the time they decide they're gonna do something amazing and it attracts new members who wanna help be a part of that something amazing. And the Glencoe arena was the first Glencoe Lions brainchild of that and I think that's one of I mean nobody knows that I don't think and they don't know that's what they're remembering so I can appreciate bringing in a little more perspective and memory into it uh go ahead Kelly and then um Mr. Moniz 
Uh, no, Krista, I was just going to say that and, and kind of agree with what Sean said um, based on geography, but also the importance of kind of some history behind things. Everything doesn't have to be changed and brand new and rebranded all the time. So whether it likely is important to change it in that it's now not just an arena, it's a community hub, but I think it's also important and relevant to kind of keep some history behind it as well. And go ahead, uh, Mr. Moniz. You're muted. Still muted. Sorry okay. about that. <clears throat> First of all, the nickname is Mel. <laughs> Don't make <laughs> me feel older by referring to me as Mr. Moniz. I only call you that because you're not totally part of the community. And I was like, how do I reference him and incorporate it? So I will do that going forward, Mel. Um, yeah, Sean's comment is valid, although I would have thought nowadays with uh, cell phones, especially the younger generation, they can look up any location very, very quickly. Uh, I do agree. I would like to see another name and certainly to reflect the, the fact that it is more of a community center than just an arena. Okay, um, so I'm fully supportive of that. Um, I'm not sure I'm supportive of fundraising. That's going to be a, a totally different issue altogether. No comment on that. Fair. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I do agree with Alex. Um, I. I think it's time, you know, people know where the arena is and it's to me Southwest Middlesex Community Center. Um, I think it, I think we need to uh, do some digging of, of history of uh, people who've played, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. You might be able um, to hear better. There has to be some um, pro players that have played in the arena. And I think doing some digging well uh, I just, chair as i had mentioned i think um finding out who if there was anybody as a pro player that lived in uh, our area um maybe uh staff can look that up Perfect. Well, it looks like we've gotten uh, feedback from a lot of different perspectives, and I will bring this back to Councillor Miguel and let him know the different perspective folks here have. Um, I love the idea of changing it to something like Recreational Hub, uh, and I think it's important to remember how we built this and how we can incorporate the old taxpayers with the new taxpayers. Um, I will have Sean and Chris comment, and then we are almost at the hour and a half mark, longest meeting ever, pretty thrilling. Go ahead, Sean. Have we, um, and I say we, but people smarter than me, gone and figure out if Glencoe and or Middlesex um, are appropriate names nowadays that they're not gonna, we're not gonna spend money to put Glencoe on the on the arena wall and then find out that it is offending a group or um, anything like that. I'm gonna let Greg answer that question. Probably we have not. Sorry, I'm just, I, I, I heard it, but I, I'm not sure what the question was. It was that whether or not Glencoe is still an appropriate name or whether it would conflict with anybody else or any other perspectives. 
Yeah, I, I think if, if council, you know, we'll deal with their notice in motion and then um, staff will follow that up uh, based on the council's direction. So I would say, yeah, that will be looked into um, as part of that uh, particular process. So it doesn't sound like it's been done yet, but once, and this is part of how come councillors make notice of motions and staff can't really do a whole lot of work until they have direction from council. And so Councillor McGill has said, let's think about this and ask staff to bring that kind of information back. So I anticipate in August, they'll hear back maybe some options if there's like a Glencoe, Wisconsin or something like that and whether there's any kind of conflict. Um, I'm gonna let Chris comment and then Eleanor. Uh, I'm good. You're good? Okay. I did have one, but I'm good. Thank you. You might be able to pop it into the chat box and we could read it out loud for everyone. Uh, go ahead, Eleanor. I was just waving to Hillary's little boy. But I oh. do want to <laughs> say we've talked a lot about sports and so on, but we haven't talked about dogs and the dog parks. Maybe that's a future conversation. It's a very we active that. community here. so. We could probably add that in. That would have been a good one to add in during our round table. We always do have a round table, but being as we might not meet again for a few months, I think it would yeah. be important to hear it now. So please go ahead, Eleanor. I just think we need to look at op opportunities and options for people who are all, always out with their dogs. And, and we do have a dog park out by the water tower that's not well maintained. Um, it needs some help. We have the old one that's just there that some people do still use. So we need to look at what maybe some new opportunities are for people with pets that want to go out and do something with them that's active. Um, like, is it possible to do a splash pad day for dogs? Something oh. like that or something fun or something different. Um, you know, maybe think of different activity or walking groups for people that their dogs all get along and everybody can do a little trail together or something like that. Just different ideas. One of the things that um, Mel had mentioned at the previous or earlier on is that they were looking at potentially sponsoring walking trails or paths within the community. And I think that would be a really excellent way for the dog park to be involved or the dog owners to be involved because having some really nice walking trails would definitely benefit more than one group of the community. But that's a fun idea about like dog days of summer. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, the juices are flowing. Yeah. Putting that down. <laughs> and it could even be like the last day that it's open just in case there's any messes <laughs> and the pool's closing, but. There, there, will be, there will be regulations as far as the health unit is concerned as, as, as far as uh, splash pads go. So we would have to look into something like that, but. I do think that Ashley has been successful in um, designing and having programs for walking and doesn't mean that you couldn't have programs for walking where you bring your dog. So I think oh, that's a cute idea. Sorry to interrupt. I should not have interrupted. I'm so sorry. Continue talking. Yeah, I just think that, that's a, that's another opportunity. So, I mean, I think Ashley has been fantastic at grabbing opportunities and seeing what she can do with them. So even Eleanor commented that because we are next to the water tower, you know, you could do like, what are those sprinklers and the dogs can go through the sprinklers at the water park, grass can get watered. <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay, so if anybody has doesn't have if, if does anyone have any other comments, questions, things they'd like to throw out there before we adjourn the meeting. Okay, I have I've driven by the dog park and it hasn't seen much use. It does get used a lot. It just doesn't seem like anybody's there when it is used. Um, and go ahead, Denise. I'm just wondering if in the future or upcoming meetings, if we could have a look at the Neighbor Good London program. It's just a suggestion. Sure, Neighbor yeah. Good London. Yeah, we can have program. it added at the programming that they have. Just a suggestion. Well, I know somebody who used to work for London. Ashley, she used to work there. Okay, so <laughs> Okay, so one last thing is there's been a request to make an adjustment to the next meeting date, partially because it is uh, at the next, it's election day. So some of us might be kind of busy. 
maybe just me. Um, any recommendations of when it could be moved to? Would the 17th be too early if we just bumped it up one day? Does that bother anybody? 17th of what? October. So it'd be one week ahead. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fine with me, so. Okay, if you're against it, speak now or forever hold your peace. Excellent. I'm gonna put that in my calendar. Okay, so with no further ado and nothing else to discuss, I adjourn this meeting at 6.30. Thanks everybody. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.